Welcome to a tutorial video on in the installation and configuration of Clusterflow. Clusterflow is a workflow manager or a pipeline tool for running high throughput next generation sequencing analyses. Um, you can find out more about it clusterflow.io and it should something look like this where you have an interactive demo and other things you can look at. Uh, all the files are held in GitHub, the source code is open source and you can find the different releases here which just has the same download links. If you want the development version, you can also get that code from here as well. Um, everything I'm going to discuss is covered in the documentation, which is on the website under the section Setting up Clusterflow. So if you want any more information, you can find that there. Clusterflow is a Perl package, so to install it, you just need to get hold of the files and set them up. So I'm going to get the download link here by copying the link address, and I'm going to load up my terminal window where I'm running on a, a Linux Slurm cluster. I've created an empty directory for the demo, which is nothing here yet, so I'm going to download the files. Should be pretty quick because there's not very much there. Um, so now I'm going to just extract those files. And now I have my directory. I'm going to remove the tar file and I can see the intercluster player and I can see my, my files here. Um, this is the main program that we run, just called CF, short for Clusterflow. Um, before we run it, though, we need to set up a site-wide Clusterflow config file. Clusterflow is designed to work with config files on three different levels. It has this file created in the installation directory, which is applied first for everybody who uses Clusterflow. Then it's expected that a user can have their own configuration file in their home directory, and finally, there can be a configuration file in the working directory at any time. So there's an example file here, which I'm going to copy um, as used as a template. And I'm just going to get rid of the dot example, so it's called clusterflow.config. I'm going to edit this with my editor of choice. You can see it's commented, so you can go through and, and read and understand what everything's going on here. This is all documented on the website as well. The main thing I want to change here is I want to set which cluster environment I'm using. So I am running on a Slurm cluster, so I'm going to change this to Slurm and I'm going to press save. That's the main thing I need to do. Great. I'm now going to create my user config file. And the way I'm going to do that is slightly differently. I'm going to use the Clusterflow wizard file. So I'm going to use the CF here and I'm going to do minus minus setup. This runs an interactive wizard, which will take me through this process. Um, so you can read all these questions as you go through. Um, and I'm going to put in things such as my email address. This is used by Clusterflow when a pipeline finishes so that it can email you for the results of that, of that pipeline. Um, some of these files, these, these settings are used for, by cluster environments. And um, some of them are doing have presets like these defaults that we can use. Um, Clusterflow will also add its own helper lines to your bash RC file. So um, you can easily access the Clusterflow commands. So I'm going to just hit yes here and yes again. Okay, so that's finished, and I now have a config file which I can see in my home directory in a hidden directory called Clusterflow, and there's a file called clusterflow.config. And you can see those settings I've put in here. I can put in my email address, my, my project, and some of the notification settings. Okay, next, Clusterflow has a built-in uh, reference genome manager. Um, this is helpful because you don't have to remember the paths to all of your reference genomes and you can use them in a more consistent way. If I do CF genomes here, which is the way to list the installed genomes, you'll see that it's empty currently, there's nothing there. So we can again use the Clusterflow wizard to add a genome. To do this, I'm going to use CF minus minus add underscore genome. And again, I can choose where to create a config file in the same places. I'm going to say in the installation directory. Um, I'm going to add the human reference genome here. So I'm going to follow these questions and put in the things that it suggests. And I'm going to set uh, the ID to be ERCH37, because that's easy to remember. 
Um, and now I'm going to give it a path to search where I have a whole range of different reference genomes here. And it's going to search through these and hopefully look for things that it recognizes automatically. So it's found uh, an index for BWA, so I'm going to say yes. It's found a GTF file, so I'm going to say yes. The star reference and the faster file, Bowtie 2, Bowtie 1. Um, and I'm going to, not going to add any manually now, but you can add further ones manually as well. Okay, so that's finished, and I, as it says, I can now check its work by doing cf minus minus genomes. Now we can see that the um, Clusterflow knows about a range of different genomes here. These all have the same name, the same key, so I can specify these all in the same just by doing minus minus genome grch37. And if the pipeline includes modules for any of these different types, then it will be able to use these different paths. So it's really easy to, to kick off Clusterflow as a result. Great, okay, I think I've just about done everything now, so I'm going to run a, um, a test analysis um, just by downloading and analysing some example DNA, um, some example sample. So uh, if I do, so this command, you can see it says CF uh, minus minus genome. So I first specify the, the cluster flow, and I do minus minus genome with the genome I've just set up. This is the name of one of the pipelines that comes with cluster flow, and then this is a, an SRA file which is publicly available. <laughs> okay, this has failed horribly because I put in an invalid project ID as an example, um, but you hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> Have a look at the documentation for more details here and hopefully fill in any blanks. And if you run into any problems, please do get in touch and I'll do my best to help. Thanks.